Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Undead Talking. This episode, we're going to talk about episode 172, well, issue 172 of the Walking Dead comic book series, uh, The Hilltop Reborn. Came out today, October 4th, 2017, and uh, it kicked off more of the story involving the people heading towards Ohio to meet up with the group there, as well as the rebuilding of the Hilltop, and much, much more. So I highly recommend stop listening if you haven't read 172 or if you aren't caught up to 172, get caught up, you know, pause the video, come back as soon as you're all caught up because we're going to be talking about everything that happened in the comic. All right, so I thought this issue was going to focus primarily on the hilltop, the rebuilding of the hilltop, Carl's role there, him stepping into more of a leadership role. Uh, maybe more about the relationship between Dante and Maggie that's been keep getting hinted at a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit at a time, but never has really come to fruition. But there's always hope that it will. However, instead, it kicks off with more about the group in Pennsylvania that's heading to Ohio. And it's uh, Princess and Yumiko and um, all of those guys heading and doing their thing. And Princess is still not kind of endearing herself to Michonne in a great way. But Yumiko, Magna, they, they seem to like her, so they're doing what they can. Princess shows that she's got a big uh, polearm spear as a weapon, which is pretty cool. We've seen a little bit of that on The Walking Dead show with the people from the kingdom, which is pretty awesome. Uh, in Alexandria, we've got some more stuff with Mikey and Rick, which is a really cool dynamic. I like that they're developing these two characters together. Uh, Mikey is might be young, but he is a character, again, that gives hope to the future of the series, much like Carl and Lydia and Sophia and Baby Herschel. You know, those younger characters could be the future of the show and the comics if it all keeps going that way. So they then they cut to a weird scene in the comics that I don't, I'm not sure why they included. And any time that happens, it always sort of brings up a little exclamation point above my head. Uh, they, they showed that the group could cut five miles off their trip by cutting through a, like what looked like a little river. Eugene says they should go for it, and then it wasn't really mentioned again. And that kind of surprised me because normally those kind of little things mean that it's going to mean something bigger in the long run. So if, when this happened, I automatically thought, okay, you know, what's going to happen? Are they going to get stuck in the mud? Are they going to draw attention to them? Is that a trap for people? But no, uh, it was never addressed in the comic again, so uh, maybe it's something they'll bring up in the future, maybe not, who knows. Uh, back at the hilltop, you got Carl, who's sweating his balls off, just working hard to bring uh, everything back up to speed there at the hilltop. And uh, his efforts are definitely being noticed. Everybody's treating him really well, and... Uh, He's really taking a lot of pride in his job, and he's feeling like the hilltop is his home, which is fantastic. And at the hilltop, Dante comes back and gives Maggie a map. He's marked off where Negan made his home. So now that Maggie has that information and there's nobody watching, she kind of has a lot of power. She can do. She can decide to do what she wants. Uh, she could go out there and take him out herself if she wanted to as a revenge for Glenn's death. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how that comes out. Because now that she has this information, she has the tools to do what needs to be done. And she has stated on multiple occasions that she does not trust Negan at all. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to watch that anyway. Alright, so Rick is still really struggling with the death of Andrea. He's spending a lot of time at her grave talking to it, crying on it, laying on it. And in this issue, he... he it's found there several times, just broken down, in tears, just a broken man right there. And I don't blame him one bit. For him, this is someone that he loved and meant a lot to him, and their survival together to this point has really been what's kept pushing him and pushing him, and he seems to be getting uh, weaker and having less and less desire. I mean, his sons have gone to live at the hilltop. Uh, some of the people that were close to him, Aaron... And Jesus are taking off to go live at the hilltop. And he's left there defending Alexandria. And he's got Dwight breathing down his neck. And he's got others that appreciate his leadership. 
but he also feels like a broken man and uh, with this kind of pushing him over the edge I'm not sure what's going to be next for Rick in the future especially if he can't bring himself together it's going to be a rough rough situation uh, this is another cool thing is that at the hilltop William was talking to Maggie and he thanked he was thanked by Maggie for bringing help from the kingdom to help rebuild the kingdom or to help rebuild the hilltop and he said that he was doing it because that's what they do and it won't be long before he needs help and that working together is what they do uh, he also says that he notices that Maggie's really distracted lately and uh, she says that she's just had a lot on her mind and that she's all right and how much of this stuff on her mind is the relationship between her and Dante or her thoughts about what to do now that she knows where Negan's living. All right, so uh, we got more scenes with Carl up on the roof hammering on shingles and the rewarding work that he's doing. But then it switches to something really interesting. Because although this comic was more about the shocking end and uh, the rebuilding, it's really strange how this relationship between Carl and Lydia continues to grow while others have seemed to kind of fall apart. Uh, him and Sophia has, have been pretty close through a lot of what was going on, and there are a lot of comic readers who did want Carl and Sophia to get together. But it turns out that, of course, he's with Lydia, and in this issue, the two, Sophia and Carl, finally got to sit down and talk when Carl woke up in the middle of the night and went outside. Uh, Sophia was hanging out out there, and she was uh, just enjoying the silence because she has to deal with uh, taking care of baby Herschel during the daytime and the silence at night is something that she really enjoys but she made sure to make it a point to to Carl to say hey uh, I, I like the time that we were spending together and I think that we should do it more often even though you're a bit concerned that it might you know interrupt your relationship with Lydia it's important that we keep talking and Carl agreed so it, I don't know if this is something that we're gonna see develop a little bit of a rift here between Lydia and Carl, and I hope that's not the case because I, I do really adore that couple. Uh, but Sophia, I understand where she's coming from, absolutely. Uh, so back on the road to Ohio and in, in Philly, or Pittsburgh, sorry, uh, they were mapping out a route. They said there's one or two days left. A uh, group of walkers come out, and uh, Princess and Michonne take them out rather easily. Uh, but the real story here is... Magna kind of hiding her relationship with Yumiko and Yumiko being quite frustrated with it. Uh, finally, she re she reveals it to Michonne and of course by now Eugene had been watching it go on. Sadiq knew the whole thing. Uh, the only one that didn't know was Michonne and she was just like, you know, okay, cool. And that's kind of how it should be at this point in the zombie apocalypse, but uh, for some reason, for Magna, it seems like more. She wasn't happy that Yumiko approached their relationship this way. Uh, but hopefully now that it's out there, they won't have to kind of sneak around, do hiding. Or maybe that's what, to her, was the appealing part of the relationship. Uh, relationships are weird, man. I, I don't know. I'm definitely not a relationship expert. But I do think that they've got a nice uh, whatever they've got going on. And I, I hope that this situation doesn't ruin that. All right, so then we're at the gate. Rick and Carl are, sorry, Rick is there and he's talking with Aaron and Jesus, wishing them off. Uh, Rick asks that he gets a list of supplies from Maggie and that Carl come back and report on what's going on at the hilltop. Uh, they say that they'll try to make that happen, but of course Carl doesn't really want to come back. Uh, he's talked about how Alexandria has a lot of painful memories for him and how Andrea's death kind of makes it even worse for him to stay there. Uh, so he may not come back, but since it's his father's request, he might. You never know. Uh, but, uh, of course, Aaron and Jesus, they do make their way off, and they go in the camp overnight at a uh, spot in between and while Aaron is sleeping, 
Jesus is admiring him, running his hand down his face. And behind him is when Frowny McTwoknives appears. Of course, uh, Beta was not killed in the Whisperer War. He got to sneak off, and two of his helpers were with him. And uh, the helpers weren't here, but Beta standing right behind Jesus is a scary way to end the episode because, or the issue, because Jesus is really a, an important character to a lot of a lot of fans. He means a lot, uh, not only because of how tough he is, but because of the impact that he makes on other characters as well. Uh, and for Beta, Beta is such a large, intimidating man that any time you see him in a one-on-one -on -one fight with anybody, it's probably not going to end good. Uh, he took Negan to the limit, and Negan is one of the biggest badasses in the Walking Dead comics. He, he can hold his own with anyone, and uh, Beta and him, they, they went head-to-head -head in a fight that, uh, I guess we can call it sort of a draw, especially since Negan lost Lucille during that fight, and that was, that was a major, major thing. Uh, but that was the end of the issue. And there was so much going on in this issue of The Walking Dead that it was tough to get a hang of everything that was going on. Uh, but it jumped back and forth so much that unlike last issue, which was very focused and direct and linear, this one told a lot of stories at once. And it got to be a little confusing, especially when it was jumping from one scene to another. Uh, like the river fording scene I don't think was really necessary. Then there was one scene with Rick where he was just sitting at a grave and it was in between other panels that had nothing to do with that. Uh, there, there were times that it seemed a little disjointed and I wish it were more linear and made more sense, but it uh, can't always be that way. Uh, but as a whole, I think that issue 172 of The Walking Dead was a solid issue and I really enjoyed seeing what was going on with all these survivors. Uh, it will leave things in a really awkward place for the next month where once again we're left to worry about the situation with the survivors. Of course, Aaron uh, was recently stabbed in the gut by the Whisperers, uh, Beta, and uh, now Beta has really Jesus at his mercy, so uh, that whole, that, that couple could come to an end at the hand of Beta, and that is a scary, scary thing. All right, so let's talk about what to expect from next month. Uh, next month, we are looking at finding out what happens in this situation with Beta. Uh, we'll probably see a little bit more of the rebuild. Uh, maybe Carl making his way towards the hill or to, towards Alexandria to talk with his dad. So, and uh, we could also see a little bit more of the trip to Ohio. I don't think we're going to get there quite yet. I'm thinking that we'll see a little bit of the travel. Maybe another walker fight scene or uh, princess earning some trust, something like that. But I don't think it's going to be anything major from that travel in the November issue. Uh, so that's basically what we've got right here. If I were to give it a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, I'll say this was a 7, 7.5. Seven uh, it, it was a good issue, not great. Uh, but it did what it needed to do to move several of the stories along, but it did uh, skip some really important stuff that I would have liked to have seen tackled. I want to see more of what's going on with Dwight and his situation with Rick, uh, why he's so mad at the leadership, why he doesn't just go to another community instead of staying at Alexandria to keep an eye on Rick while making weird death threats. Um... <sighs> The Walking Dead comics are so, it's not really cluttered, but they're so involved right now. There's so many storylines going on that need to be resolved before anything big can happen. And I think we're going to see a little bit of that before the end of the year. I think November and December are going to wrap up some, some of the minor storylines so we can get into something major, uh, like what was revealed in the letter hacks section, that we're going to have a new uh, big next big thing coming, whether it's a big bad or a big event, uh, it's on the way. So we're going to need to see that cleared up before we get a little bit more of that kind of action. But I'll be back again to talk about next month's issue of The Walking Dead, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I tried to get someone on with me to talk about it, but uh, not a lot of 
comic fans get their comics very early and want to discuss things on camera. So hopefully next month I'll be able to bring someone on with me to talk about the Walking Dead comics. But in the meantime, stay alive in the zombie apocalypse.